Hi everybody, Jo here again. It's Tuesday, so it's time for our little crafty catch up. Now this week, as promised last week, we're going to use, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, that's not a good start, is it? <clears throat> Clear my throat, we'll try again. So this week, we're going to use some of the new stamps. And I thought we'd do a beautiful meadow design. Well, you know I love florals. But I have to say, if you're somebody who's ordered the stamps and you're eagerly awaiting for them to come, I know it can be a bit of a pain waiting. So this design, you could create with stamps you've already got. Or you can just put it to one side in your head and save it for when your new stamps come. Now, I have stamped my envelope. I'll bring the design closer for you to have a good look. And I've stamped the envelope look and I've used the lovely green tone, the Shady Lady aka Shady Lane and um, the Versafine clearing so you know if it gets wet it won't run and I just think that's such a lovely addition. I'll pop the envelope over here and I don't know if you can see there's a little bit of sparkle just catch it here on the leaves look and we're going to add a subtle bit of sparkle and we've got a little bit of decoupage in as well. The main reason I'm creating this is not just so I can have a play with my new stamps, but if you remember last week when we created our design, and if you missed it, you might want to pop back and look at last week's, and that was the Spring Trees video. We used a stencil, and it was this one, the Flower Spray stencil, and we put some green yellow and blue ink if my memory serves me correct but obviously you can check on the video we put some ink through the stencil with our lovely stencil brush and we cleaned the stencil by spritzing water and putting it on the piece of card and when it dried this is what we have now I quite often do that but quite a few of you've messaged me and said you know it's all right saying to us right use that later but can we see how you use it because if we're not careful, sometimes we do have these throwaway comments and, and I do appreciate it when you let me know things. And so what I thought is this design started off as the background. And if you look, you can just subtly see it's in the background here. So this design is all about layers and we're going to have the first layer is this which is our background with our ink from the stencil I clean up. So it's a freebie. I do love a freebie and I bet you do too. I've got to be honest, most of us crafters do. Then we're going to be adding some stamping in the background, some more stamping in the foreground, some extra details and then just a depth of colour at the base. And have you noticed the sentiment? I must just tell you. So this is from our brilliant new sentiment stickers from Lavinia. Look at these. <clears throat> Mine arrived yesterday, so I have to say I have used one already. Beautiful words. Lovely lady. Oh, I know some lovely ladies on here. Best friends. I mean, yeah. Magical. Hugs. Ch love and... I mean, good times ahead. Oh, let's hope so. Fairy wishes and angel kisses. I'm sure that's on a stamp as well. But I have to say, it's like that. Be beautiful. You know, rainbows just beautiful words and these are great for your, your journaling but also as I say for cards so I couldn't resist it and I had to use one and I've put live in the moment on this one so as I say we'll start with our background now it's an eight by eight card blank so that the piece of clean up card I used was a seven by seven and as it happens I'd already drawn my black Sharpie line round it. I have a stash at the side of me of pieces of card, which when I've got a spare few minutes, haha, <laughs> like we all have those, I um, just tend to draw my black Sharpie line round and then it's ready for sort of clean up. So as I say, this was my clean up. Now, the first thing I tend to do, and I know this sounds obvious, is actually decide on my orientation because it can make a difference depending what you're wanting to stamp, which way up you have it. Now, I'm actually thinking this way because I'm thinking this with the almost the bluey tones is more subtle for the sky. And this is just going to give me the nice background and blending down into my green. So that's why I'm heading for this. 
And what I'm going to do is start with, we've got a lovely new stamp set called Leaf Spray. And on that it has two stamps. And these I'm going to stamp in the background. I'm just going to get my inky binky on my knee ready. And we're going to start with, I've come in with Versafine Claire and this one's Summertime. And I'm going to choose the largest of these two stamps. I'm just going to turn my work to the side, you know what I'm like. Now with this, I'm not going to ink up all of the stem. Because I want this to be in the distance, I just feel if I don't ink up the whole thing, it will just look better. I've got less um, for when I stamp in the foreground, if that makes sense. Now, what you can do is just pat this bit here and it almost fuzzes it up a little bit. So I'm just going to do some random first and second generation and I'm starting furthest away. Just it's good practice of less chance of smudging that. If I start here, I may smudge it. And I'm not overthinking this. I don't want to put it all in a sort of a big row. I almost want clusters, you know, like you're getting sort of meadows. And again, I'm altering the height of these. And some, I find when I do second generation, I don't press on quite as hard because I almost want some like this that look like you've missed stamps, but I want them to look sort of fuzzy, like they're in the distance. So it's the one time that you can. <laughs> and we'll just put a, a couple at a, a angled there. And we'll just have a little bit of there. And so that's just building up for me that look of though we've got something in the distance. Few things help with the distance. Your lighter colours help, so second generation helps. Um, as I say, this lovely wispy stamp doing clusters like this, not stamping all the way down. Few little tricks you can just that are handy to use. So I'm just going to wipe my stamp and put it back on. And I'm going to come in with the other stamp now. These, I think, uh, the what I call those, I've said it before, unsexy stamps. And by that, I mean stamps that you don't necessarily look at. When you first see this collection, I must admit, the dandelions got me straight away. There are, And these sort of, I thought, oh, but actually these are the ones that, you'll be amazed, a bit like the field grass, you'll use them again and again and again just for adding that wispiness when you just need something but you don't want anything too heavy. So the next one I'm coming in with Verdant and that's because this is a light green. Now again, this is only something in the distance. This is the stamp that when you look at the finished design look, it doesn't stand out. But if I look closely, I can see it here and here and it's one of those that if you didn't have it in the background you would notice something missing if that makes sense and we don't want it to be fir the first thing you notice when you see this design but if it wasn't there there would be a gap it's almost nice to have these sort of almost hidden stamps and with it being green on green, it just adds to that whole tone. So again, I'll give that a wipe. I don't want to overcook it with these background stamps. As I say, that's what they are. They're just background stamps. And now we'll come in with, this one is called Tall Dandelion. And it has a beautiful dandelion and also a couple of leaves. So we'll do the dandelion bit first. And this is where Shady Lady, aka, you know, the real name Shady Lane. I must admit, I've had to buy a new one of these. My other one. It's amazing how quickly, just shows you how I use this so much. Now again with this, I don't want the whole of the stalk on this. I'm just going to get rid of a little bit. And let's just have a few sort of heads floating up here. There's one. And then I'm 
something in here. And again, I want this to be a bit random. So, but random isn't easy to do, is it? So if we just change, keep turning it round so I can have a look. One coming off the page over here looks nice. And like I say, I'm purposely not doing the, the stem on all of them. Now there's a space there where I think that. And then one more. I don't want to overcook it. And obviously we've got the other stamps as well. Put one there. Yeah, I'm liking that. And again, just have fun. The thing is with this, you're trying to create a beautiful meadow, but I always say you don't want to overcook it. We don't want a pizza. We want it to look sort of artistically nice and like a lovely full meadow, but not like it's all just been thrown on. So we'll carry on with our, with our green. And let's just put some of the, the mane. Now this one, this is from Open Dandelion. And this has got this beautiful dandelion and um, a bud. So I'm going to be using both. Now let's have an open one over here. And again, if you look, that's perfectly gone just at the bottom of those stalks. If I'd have stamped them through, you would have seen them. So we'd have either had to make sure we coloured them or decoupage the head. Whereas this way, and that just helps with our distance and also means we don't have to mask off. Obviously, we could have done masking if we'd wanted. But you know me, if I don't have to do something. So we'll have one there. And I'm thinking one just coming in here. We need another one because that looks too. Sometimes you just think, right, there's a space there. Yeah, prefer that. And often what I do is I stop, have a look, go back. I mean, although I'm putting this stamp to the side, if I want to come in later and decide I want another one, I can do. But we'll come in with the lovely... Um, seed head now I say lovely they're not lovely when you get them in the garden are they now I'm going to decoupage one so I'm thinking I'll put this one over here and that doesn't matter because I'm going to decoupage this one so that works well right and let's just build up we need that yeah I like that that height that just looked a bit that was messing with my head and again there will be bits that you'll think oh I need to just change that I need to just and just keep looking at it now this bit here is annoying me so I could come in shall I put a leaf there or shall I put another no, I think that looks too many there. Yeah, we'll put the leaf. What we'll do, we'll try the leaf. And again, you'll find you'll do this. You'll add little bits. You'll probably talk to yourself like I do. I have to say, I do talk to myself even when you're not here with me. <laughs> so let's bring these leaves in. So let's start over this side same colour ink and let's just build up this foreground with some leaves and these add detail and almost really ground the whole design often with a design like this you'll find that sort of halfway through you may not love it and things may annoy you like this bit here which I'm hoping I can just get rid of and make myself feel better about that area. But you will have bits like that. Right, now let's bring in the smaller one and just add a little bit more detail, I'm thinking, there. And it is amazing, you know, when you carry on and just 
add bits and then all of a sudden you think oh that's made such a difference and I'm hoping if I turn this round can you see now how that's really starting to add the depth and build up just and sometimes it's little bits like I just think this will look better if we just have that leaf there just popping in there fills that space and I'm thinking we'll just have one this side, just popping in there. It's amazing how, you know, stamping off the edge again helps. And that's looking a bit bare just down here. So we need a bit of first and second generation there. Yes, I'm happy with that. Don't want any more, don't want to overcook it. So just give those a wipe and put those back. So those leaves come with the tall dandelion. Now, while we've got those stamps out, I'm just going to, on a spare piece of card, just stamp the little bits and just give you a quick heads up. So I keep all my little bits of card. Now, I must admit, this stamp, I have stamped so many times because I must admit, I love cutting it out. If you're not somebody who's keen on fussy cutting, um, the seed head is much easier to cut out. So it might be that in your design, you want to decoupage that element more than the actual open dandelion. But I must admit, I, on just spare pieces of card, just stamp myself so many of these and then add colour and then cut them out when I'm having one of those coffees. And as you know, I do have quite a few coffees in the day. I mean, for me, I like to, if the weather's OK, sit in the garden and do a little bit of cutting out with my coffee. I'll put those over there and back to the design I'm just going to run my heat tool over this just so I know it's nice and dry I don't want to smudge any of it now you will have noticed in my original I've got this beautiful seed head I'm not going to stamp that just yet because I want to wait and see the positioning of where I'm going to put my, my moon mask and that's just me that's the way my, my head works so what we'll do we'll do that next and we're going to use the middle size one I think it is we've used and again when it comes to using this for me if I put it over there it's almost oh, I don't know I quite like it on this one do I like it there no I quite like it over there on the original I had it here or would it spotlight that or oh, that might spotlight that could be the moon and a spotlight oh you see now I'm torn I haven't had decisions I could put it there no, I quite like it there. <laughs> I do this. Do you do this? I find I actually argue with myself. Very bizarre. So we'll come in with the Elements Ink Pad and it's the Della Blue we're using. And again, I always put my ink on the lid. I don't want to waste it on my craft mat and then have to clean it up. So we'll put, I think we'll just go here. And again, start on your mask and start at the base because obviously it's going to be darker. Beautiful blue. And then just come round and it'll be lighter at the top. Pick some of that ink up. Let's have a look. Yeah, I like that. And then I'm just with what's left on my brush just going to almost put a little bit, not a lot, it's just adding a little bit and just go over that, it's a bit stark. So just to sort of hazy that up. I almost want it to look like one of those lovely summer hazy days that we get. 
and as always just give the mask a wipe and put that away so i want to deepen the base now so we're going to come in with another element ink pad and this one's olive and stencil brush and I've just, where's my kitchen towel gone? Just so I can lean. And again, dab off on the lid. Now this is going to be quite deep. So I'm going to start on the corner because I want the corner darker. Right along and then ink up again on my corner. And I want this to be quite dark. I want it to really sort of add a bit of drama to the, the whole proceedings and then turn it round so I'm actually going to bring the colour up a little bit more and we're not going to add any more ink because I just want that hint of colour and in fact I'm going to go a bit darker at the bottom right along there let's have a look yeah, I like that. It just, for me, that just um, grounds everything and it brings your eye to the base. And I will just clean this up. So I hope you're having a good week. I hope everybody's keeping well. And I hope you like these new stamps. I must admit, I've had such fun playing with them. Now, what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of colour here. And I'm going to come in with my watercolour pencils. And in this box, there's a beautiful light green. You can see, hmm, I'm using this a lot, and an orange. And it's just those two colours. That's all I'm going to use. And for the middle of this dandelion, I'm just going to come in with the green. Now, these are watercolour pencils, but you don't have to add water if you don't want. I find them so useful because for me, one box of pencils fits all possibilities. So I could actually leave them like that. Or if I want, I can add some water. And I want to keep it all tone on tone. I'm sort of keeping these greens and, and oranges. So we'll come into the buds now. And I'm just going to go green round the edge. And then add a little bit of orange in the middle. Now, if you're going to decoupage some, you don't have to colour those. So it's thinking ahead which you're going to decoupage. So I know I'm definitely going to decoupage that. But saying that, I like to add a little bit of colour around the edge anyway. Just because um, then when you're decoupaging, it, it just adds to it. If you can see a little bit underneath and it almost adds to the shadow, the shading. But what we'll do, we'll colour these in. And even though I've got my ink on here... I can still add colour, but it almost deepens it, which is nice. I love that effect. So I think I need to think which ones of these I'm going to decoupage, don't I? Or, to be honest, most of the time what I tend to do is just colour them all in and then decide afterwards which ones I'm going to decoupage. Now, because I'm going to will add water to these just to show you so because I'm going to do that I'm not being over careful with my colouring so I'm adding green at the top and then lovely orange of course my favourite colour at the base look same thing on here and this is such a lovely lovely way of um almost like speed colouring I mean obviously if you've got time and you want to take time and really spend your time you know I mean that's that's lovely and I have to say fair play to you but with the best in the world I just don't have time to do that but I enjoy being able to add colour this way 
And so that's just for me. But you know me, whatever, however you like to do it. I just find this is such a lovely way to do it. And I've got my water pot here. My number one, my favoured little watercolour brush. And like I say, look, you can just add water and watercolour these. I could have left them if I'd wanted, just with the, the pencil. And when it comes to here, I'm going to go in the orange first and then into the green. And what I do is always clean my brush in between. So here we'll go into the green first look, just watercolour that, and then into the orange. And it'll just blend the two colours together, but also adds to the vibrancy. And I always wet my brush and just clean it in between each flower. So onto the green and then into that orange and just blend. So green again and then into the orange. I'm going to blend that round there. Like I say, very easy way of adding colour, but very effective. Now, on the ones we've stamped out, look, I would do exactly the same thing. So I'll just show you on a couple. So again, with the green around the edge, and then a bit of orange in the middle. Same thing, get my paintbrush into the orange and then round into the green. You'd be glad to know I've already coloured some and cut them out. So you don't have to sit and watch me watch me do that. I'll just pop the pencils there. So that's what we've got so far. And the lovely thing about this, at all these stages, you could leave this if you wanted. Now, I know you're going to be asking me why haven't I coloured the leaves. I'm going to use something different to colour the leaves. Just so that I can show you as much as I can. But what I do want to do is come in with my little mini seed head. And this is one of the pound range. And I just thought it goes beautifully with these. And again, I don't want to overcook it. I don't want too much up here. So I'm just thinking, let's just put one there. That way, just floating off. Now, I could have put my sentiment up there, but I like the sentiment at the base with this one. But again, you know, I, oh, I change my mind as I'm going. I don't know about you, but trying to do the same thing twice, obviously, I, I like to. Anyway, it's good, isn't it? It's nice being creative, just changing it up a bit. So what we're going to do now is just because I've added the colour here, I just fancy some dare I say, water splats. Now again, if you're not somebody who likes these, you can leave this bit off. So I'm just going to come in with my fan brush and I just want to add on this ink down here some little water splats just to add a little bit more, um, almost sort of dramatic, sort of in the background. Um, like I say, if you don't like your water splats, you don't have to add them at this point. And what I will do is just, again, add a few in the sky. And I like to do this near the end, just because then I don't have to worry about stamping on my card and whether it's dry or not. Now, if I bring it closer, as you can see, these are just the little bits that, for me, it just adds extra interest. So it's, it's another layer. It's adding a little bit more detail onto your card. Like I say, they're the bits that if they weren't there, it would look like there was something missing, but you just wouldn't know what. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to add some. I have one of my mystical sprays, and this one is amber green. Now, again, it's got mica in, so give it a good shake. And all I'm going to do is I have got some, and you can see I've just spritzed it onto my acrylic block. And this is what I'm going to use to paint my leaves look. 
and it just means that there'll be a bit of extra shimmer. And again, it's just such a lovely way to use these. And you can still see you don't lose, if I bring it close, can you see, you don't lose the detail in the stamp. If you've never tried painting with them, honestly, they're beautiful. Now, one lady did ask a question the other day. So these are the mica sprays. The other sprays are the acrylic sprays. So we do have two ranges. And I know you're just shouting at me about those two leaves there. But what I am going to do is just add a little bit on the base of these. And I want to just get my paintbrush to a point, so I'm just going to roll it. So again, if you just roll your paintbrush, it keeps it to that beautiful point. And I just want a tiny bit of this and just add it. And as I say, with this having the mica in, it will dry beautifully and just give us that bit of, of shimmer. Now you could use your, your stickles, your glitter glue at this point if you wanted or any of our glitters. It's up to you. I mean, dandelions like this, the seed heads, I mean, there are so many things we could use. And we'll just add a little bit on here. And then just for good measure, now again, if you don't want to do this, don't do it. We'll just add a few splats. If you don't like splats, leave this bit off. I'm going to put that up there. And then I'll just bring my heat tool in. So just bear with me while I give this a bit of a dry. We've added a few things onto it. We'll speed it up with the kitchen towel. Again, at home I would leave it. I would go and make myself another coffee. <laughs> Any excuse for another coffee? Can you tell? I work my way through my with my brews. So again, heat from the back. It's just as important as from the front. It'll keep your card nice and flat. But honestly, with painting, can you see that shimmer? And it just adds, like I say, that extra detail. So what we'll do now is get our little... Now, as I say, I've already cut some out. In fact, look at this. I spend my time cutting out. I love just um, having things ready to decoupage. So, and I've got my bittity boppity glue, which you know I can't say. So from now on, it's going to be called, in my head, it's BB glue. And before I actually do this, let's just add some white highlights. Oh, the little robin just sat on my window ledge then. <laughs> sort of tapped the window. wonder if my bird feeder at the front is empty. He comes and tells me. I don't know if you've got birds like that they are funny so we'll put that one there and then I'm thinking we'll have another one there a bit of white highlight on that and then a bit of this beautiful BB dries clear glue and it does give you a little bit of wiggle time so you can just get that perfect obviously if you wanted more of a decoupage 3d effect you could use a 3D glue gel. Now, do we go with that one or that one? And we're going to have a sentiment, aren't we? Yeah, I think I'll put my sticker there. And we'll go, actually, I've got two. I might do these two. And then my sticker. Well, let's see, which sticker shall we have? Moments like these. I like that. See, that was decisive, wasn't it? So I'm thinking, now again, sometimes 
to get it straight you can use your mat but I like to use a pair of scissors so I'm thinking if I just put that there yes and then that's decided definitely I'll just do one each side let's just add some little white highlights to that one and that one And when I've cut these out, I've not cut the sort of like tail bits because we've already stamped those. So these bits I didn't need to cut out. So that was good. Save me, uh, saves a bit of time, doesn't it? And a bit of that fussy cutting. And then on these bits, I'm just going to be, just because I like to, things to match I'm just going to get a little bit of that mica spray and paint that on here there we go I'll put our glue away and then with our white pen let's just add some little white highlights here Let me check it's working. Yep. Mike, oh, might not be dry, but there we go. And just, again, just these little finishing touches. Maybe the odd one on the odd leaf look. Again, you'll let your mica dry properly so it'll be easier for you. I want to overcook it with the white highlights. No, I think that's enough. Maybe just a little bit there. I do this. Oh, that's enough. And then I add some more, don't I? Right, that's definitely enough. But just for my final finishing trick, I'm going to come in with a black fine liner. And I'm just going to add a border. Now, you could leave your stick like this. Totally up to you. But I'm just going to add a random. And again, I'm not going to think about this. It's just my sketchy little border. And again, I find if I do it at speed, don't think about it. It looks better. If you think about it too much, it looks like you have. And we'll do a bit of the heart monitor and a bit just to come out of there and there. There we go. And then there we have it. I've got to be honest, I love that and I've really enjoyed creating it. And for me, that's such a generic card. I think that could be given for so many different reasons. So I'm hoping you like these new stamps as much as I have. And I'm hoping it's shown you a way of using... This is where I'm going to write space, isn't it? Um, using those backgrounds that we make with the, um, with the stencils, our clean-up backgrounds... I'll bring in the one we've made today because you can't really, we can't have them both on at the same time. So there's the one we did earlier. Now again, should you wish to add the dragonfly or one of the fairy foragers, there are lots you could do this. Again, it's one of those designs. Once you start making it, you could think of other ways of just changing it up a bit. Again, we've got the secret garden um, stamp, haven't we? with that lovely um, sign, you could actually put Secret Garden here. Again, so many things you could do. So thank you for joining me today. As always, it's lovely to spend time with you and thank you for all your feedback. You take care, everybody, and I'll see you again next week. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now. <laughs>